Hey team, so today we thought we'd make a little video for you about my fitness pal. Um, I know a few of you were hoping to get into maybe tracking those calories a little bit more. Dennis, I know that you already track your calories and you're having great success with it. Um, Kate and Amit, and I know you guys were sort of looking at tracking your calories or starting to track those as well with my fitness pal. So we'll give you a little how to today of how to use the app, um, why it's beneficial, and sort of things that you may forget to incorporate into your tracking that are really important. So the first thing we're going to do is open the My Fitness Pal application and this is my home screen. So this is all set up for my goals. So um, currently it's on 1,803 calories. Um, that is based on me for my fat loss. You guys will be different depending on the goals that you're looking for. So <clears throat> When you are setting up your calorie goal, don't go with what My Fitness Power automatically gives you. Speak to us and we will help you set that calorie goal. So once we have our calorie goal set into My Fitness Power, the first thing you're going to do is obviously log your food. So in order to do that, what we have to do is press this plus button here and it will give you a whole host of things that you can log. So you have got your status so you can obviously uh, update statuses and things like that but that's not important your water consumption food exercise and weight now i would say ignore the green and the yellow exercise and the status they're not important but your water food and you might want to log your weight on here as well when you've been uh, weighed at lean in 60 um, but most importantly today is food so straight in the center i haven't logged my breakfast yet today so i'm going to do that i'm going to tap breakfast now, I have a list of regular foods that I eat because I've used my fitness pal quite a lot. I found it very successful myself for um, reducing my body fat and maintaining a certain weight as well. <clears throat> so I know today I've had 30 grams of peanut butter. That is already at the top. I can tap that and then I can also add more foods at the bottom by scrolling down. So it tells me how many calories are in that much peanut butter. It does give you a, a macro split as well. Again, you don't have to look too much into that, but it is there. So once I've added my peanut butter, I can press the tick, add food, and that has been added to my intake. So you'll see it has the total amount of calories, how much I've eaten, what exercise I've done, and the total that is remaining. <clears throat> now, the reason we don't track our exercise on my fitness pal is because that will then add more calories to your day. And if you want to maintain a calorie deficit, you don't want to be adding more calories onto what you can eat throughout the day. <clears throat> now, you might be wondering, why should I track my calories with my fitness pal? And it's a really good tool because it empowers you. It allows you to see how much you are consuming versus how much you are burning and then you can figure out the balance to get yourself in that calorie deficit to get that body fat moving down. So even if you are, you assume you're in a calorie deficit, maybe you're not considering things like oils or um, maybe if it's spread on toast or you know something like that. Those little things add up and they can be just enough to tip you over the edge and put you either on that maintenance or even a calorie surplus. So when you are adding your foods to MyFitnessPal, as well as being able to add them through the centre buttons here. Let's go back to breakfast. Now, if you search for an item in this top bar and it doesn't come up, what you can do is scan your food with this barcode icon here. And what it does is it brings up a little camera here in which all you have to do is pop the barcode behind it and it will scan your food. Now, with that, you do have to weigh out and portion the foods. So if you have a pre-made rice pouch that you're using and you're only using half, make sure that you add that it is just a half of a rice pouch and try and get that as close to it as possible if you're not physically weighing it on a scale. The more accurate you can be, the more accurate your results will be. So if you just kind of go, yeah, I guess that's 100 grams of X, Y or Z food, you're no, not necessarily going to get 100% accuracy with the calories. You won't get that anyway, but as close to. And don't forget to track things like oil. 
oil is quite an easy one to use a lot of and not realize that there's a lot more calories in it than there is. One tablespoon of oil is about 100 calories just over. So it is really important to track those little things as well because they can make a big difference throughout the day if you were to cook, say, two meals of your three a day with oil that's another 200 calories and if you don't account for that that could be enough just to put you like we say in that maintenance or surplus zone so for those of you that aren't currently tracking maybe you're not quite getting the results you'd like to see or maybe you want to increase the speed of the results that you're trying to get um, my fitness pal is a really good way to allow you to really understand what you're eating and how much you're kind of burning if you have things like a fitbit you can use that alongside um, but it will allow you to put yourself into, say, a 200 calorie deficit to really keep that fat loss going. Um, and also you'll, you'll understand a little bit more portion sizes in yourself. So when you're looking at, you know, a standard cereal um, has a 30 gram serving size. Now, that's not very much for the average person, but you'll see in that average 30 gram serving that how many calories are actually there so, so i know i spoke to i can't remember exactly who it was it might have been angela or kate about um crunchy nut and how a serving size of that is 100 grams now 100 grams of that isn't very much but the sugar and calorie content is quite significant and it's not necessarily something that's going to give you the best start to the day so when even when you're making your smoothies and things like that you know measure out what you're kind of popping in if you're splitting multiple smoothies then you can obviously gauge it roughly a, a third of the total kind of calorie intake of what you're, you've put into MyFitnessPal. When you are aiming towards a calorie deficit already in MyFitnessPal, so mine says 1800 calories, I would say try and stick to that goal. Try not to eat just a thousand calories and no more because you're probably going to find yourself feeling that a little bit more hungry unless your BMR is naturally much lower. So do try and get the sort of the calorie deficit target that we've maybe set for you so you don't set yourself up to feel really hungry and then maybe end up going off the scale, you know, in that uh, hunger sort of state. Now, the other thing that I always think is really good to do, think of your favourite restaurant, whether it be, I know for myself, it's ZZ's um, or pizza express or somewhere along those lines a lot of those meals are in my fitness pal so i know for example if i were to add some food and i go pretend let's say we've had dinner i'm gonna search for uh zz's lentil ragu oh raging so here is the vegan lentil ragu that i normally consume when i go to zz's now that is 610 calories. So if I click that, 610 calories, I now know that that's roughly what the meal that I will have when I go out is. So even when you're eating out, you can still have a look and see what it is that you're eating. Now I get that most of the time when I go out, I'm very simple, but I also like to get a starter and I like to indulge in dessert too. So, you know, you can add those things in there and you can see just how much you're going to consume. So let me just uh, get those other couple of bits up for you. Now, the other classic that I like to get when I go to ZZ's is the uh, vegan chocolate torte. Now you can see on this one that that is around 539 calories. Now that comes with honeycomb or a form of honeycomb and some vegan ice cream as well. So that all adds up. So you think if you have that, that ragu and that tort, that's over a thousand calories for just dinner. Now, if you're going about your normal day and you've already had a 600 calorie breakfast plus another 600 calorie lunch, there's a fair amount of calories there. So if you're doing that regularly, that can be the tipping point for you to either not lose weight or to start to gain weight. So it's always good to think about those things when you're going out as well. So hopefully that's helpful for you guys. Um, obviously, we don't want you to become, you know, my fitness power warriors and become obsessed. But we do want to make you guys educated and empowered so that while you're doing Lean in 60, you can get the best results possible. All right. If you have any questions, let me know. Come ask me in the gym. I'm always there. I'm always using my fitness pal so I can always pull it up and go through a few things with you if you need help. All right.